Hey guys, welcome back to A-Level Lessons. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at the next part of your King 2.2 on resources, looking at resource appraisal. So this is going to be a rather short video. It's not going to be very long. I'm just going to go through what are the several factors that affect resource appraisal. And then once we're done with those, um, it's basically all you need to really know for this entire chapter. So firstly, what's the definition of resource appraisal? So resource appraisal refers to the assessment of the availability of resources. So it is an assessment, right? So you're looking at um, the, the various kinds of resources and you're looking at how do different uh, people, for instance, can actually assess these different resources. So it can be affected by various factors such as cultural, socioeconomic, technology and political factors. So in this video, we're going to be covering each one of these various factors and how it leads to different resource appraisal. Okay, So how does it lead to different views on one same resource? Firstly, cultural, we're looking at value systems and traditions. So cultural basically refers to, um, for example, a good having an attached uh, tradition or attached um, quote-unquote heritage to it. So different cultures in the world would have different value systems. So an entity is seen to have value to one um, may not actually be the same for another. Right? So for instance, um, Okay, we'll look at an example later on as you can see go, right? So this leads to various perceptions and recognition of value amongst different resources by different groups of people who come from different um, value systems, okay, different cultural backgrounds. So for example, gold, right, gold, two-thirds of the gold demand is actually from the rural population. Uh, but even if there is a four times rise in prices, um, or if there's anything that affects the prices of gold in general, the demand still remains very, very inelastic due to its intrinsic and instrumental value. We've already gone through what this is, so you can check out the previous video for it. But essentially what happens is that in the case of India, gold is see, seen to be a very um, precious resource, right? It seems to be something that holds a lot of value to it, right? It acts as a as a sign of, um, I mean, not, not just wealth, okay, but it acts as a traditional sign for a lot of people over who are living in India. It's a tradition that, um, has actually carried gold throughout the many years. So this is something that has got an attached significant value to it. Um, but for example, to anyone else who may be out there, you may think that, oh, diamond may be more precious than gold. So it really depends on where you are from. Okay, it depends on what cultural and belief system you are in. And that would definitely affect the kind of resources that you actually see value in. Next will be your socioeconomic Factor. So this refers to anything regarding socioeconomic based uh, factors, for example, income levels, education and profitability. So social changes influence the value and the use of resources. It actually redefines the underlying value and the meaning of certain resources. Right? So when society changes, right, society progresses and evolves, definitely the, there will be new appreciation for um, different kinds of resources, right? So, for example, increasingly nanotechnology is becoming a uh, possible resource that has been highly sought after. Um, and in fact, things like fossil fuels are declining in its um, favor because of the detrimental effects it does to the environment. So different resources will have different um, changes when it comes to society changing as well. So ethnicity, education, and income are actually factors that can influence how societies uh, value these resources. And the composition is always frequently changing. So this results in fast changing appraisal of resources with every generation that comes. So with every new generation, there will be certain resources that go out of date. There will be certain resources that uh, start to become high in demand. So depending on which generation, okay, as we pro progress as a society, resources will have different appraisals by the different types of people. An example would be in New, New, uh, New England, came okay, back in the day, when lobster actually was used to be fed to, uh, to workers okay, and servants as a very, very cheap food resource. Right, only in the 19th century, okay, when there was an influx of immigrants, um, did it actually change the value, right? They brought a new perspective to what lobsters was. It started to become something that was gourmet, something that is, um, you know, of a higher value. So this is what actually changed the value of lobsters in this case. Next would be a technological factor. So this refers to knowledge and technical capability. So as we all know, technology is ever changing. Right, so it changes our knowledge and skills in actually sourcing for new resources and exploiting such resources. So with 
advancements in technology, we are going to actually find new resources, possibly even more capable resources to handle certain things in, in the world. Right? And this can actually lead to new areas of appraisal for these new resources. So ever-changing and evolving technology has led to the discovery of new resources that have never been seen before. For example, groundwater, where it was never a resource until made available by the drilling of a well and installing pumps to bring it to the surface. So likewise for purified water, the your new water, clean water, all of these were only made possible with technology, right? They still water as well. So all of these without technology would have just been water and um, they would not have had such a value-added um, appraisal to it, uh, which we have today. So spatial variations are seen in this factor as technology tends to be affordable only by the more developed countries which are actually wealthier. So they are the ones who can actually move on with these advancements and make strides um, to find, locate new resources and to exploit them and bring a greater value to these resources. Lastly would be your political um, factor. So this refers to national resource policies and the influence by international organizations. So political factors include actions by the state and international organizations in their involvement in resources. So we're looking at a case when the state, okay, or when companies actually get involved, directly involved with such resources. So when they do get involved, okay, it can actually lead to um, the changing in resource appraisal in certain areas. So state involvement is very deep and pervasive in extractive industries. For example, state-owned enterprises which operate within an extractive GPN as a regulator and operator. I've gone through this in Team 2.1. You can go and check out those videos there. Um, national policies also by the state can actually guard the extent to which resources are extracted and distributed. So as a government, you can actually choose to maybe set certain regulations around certain resources or potentially even to... Um, cap okay, and, and take, a, take a certain profit of certain resources um, which are being exploited by external companies, for instance. So all of these will affect the level of appraisal towards such resources as well. It will affect the value that is attached to them. One example over here would be the international organization of your OPEC. So all of us have heard of this, right, the organization of petroleum exporting countries. So they basically um, handle a lot of the oil when it comes to the entire world in general, right? So nationalization of oil production makes possible collaboration between oil producing countries to control the production level and prices. So this organization seeks to um, kind of like balance everything, right? And ensure that a fair price is being set, a fair quantity is being produced. Um, and OPEC has actually defended oil prices and heavily guarded a lot of these oil resources, which has led to oil not only having certain spikes in the economy at times, but also having um, certain uh, downfalls. So it, it has been um, on a very, very specific um, set of controlled measures by the OPEC. So all of which will actually affect the resource appraisal of oil in this case as well. All in all, your exam requirements for this chapter are quite simple. You just need to be able to explain the various factors that affect resource appraisal and provide any sort of relevant examples where required. In this video, I've already given you some. You can use those. And uh, it, if you are ever worried on when this may come out, okay, it will tend to come out for your smaller mark essays. So you just need to very simply explain. There won't usually be a need to discuss, but in the event that you do, just weigh the various factors and find use of evaluation techniques to decide which factors are going to be the more important ones when it comes to resource appraisal. So that is all I have for this video. If you did learn something and you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a like. As well as to subscribe to the channel. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And you can always change your mind later. Um, if not, if you have any questions, always leave it in the comment section below. I will answer them as well. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.